Hey guys, it is Ryan with ZenFX and I wanted to do something special for you guys today. I wanted to show you some live trades that we took using our Renko strategies and our Renko charts. Uh, I've got a, I have had a lot of people contact me about how do we get started with Renkos? Do they work? I mean, a whole bunch of different questions. So I wanted to show you some trades that we took that were called out in our live trade room. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually apply Renkos to your current trading strategies and make some good pips. So let's take a look at it really quick. Let's roll that intro. Okay guys, thanks for joining me. So again, what I want to do today is I wanted to show you some amazing trades that we took last week. And I wanted to kind of show you where, you know, the proof is in the pudding because I get a lot of emails from a lot of different people, um, you know, asking a variety of things. Mostly they want to know, how do I get started with Renko's? You know, can I actually use them in my Forex trading? You know, is it profitable? You know, a lot of different questions. I also get a lot of people, you know, get all kinds in my inbox talking about, oh, you know, it looks good on, you know, in, in hindsight, oh, you know, maybe if you back tested it, you would see that, you know, this and that, and, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, doubting Thomas's, if you will. So I wanted to show you today how we took these trades. We called them out. I called them out in our live student room, uh, which we have a ton of people uh, in our student rooms uh, that join me three times a week where we do live trade rooms. We do live markups and then we look for these things actively in the market. It's not back testing. It's not after the fact, you know, we trade these setups in live real markets and I'm going to show you how we did that this week. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to show you uh, all of these trades that played out going to show you a little bit of, you know, after the fact, how they ended up playing out, which, you know, spoiler alert, they almost all uh, ended in profit, which is great. And then what I'm going to do is after I finish doing that, it's going to take me maybe, you know, four or five minutes just to show you all these trades that hit nice profit. I'm going to give you the grand total. And then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to attach at the end of that, the actual recording of the live trade room that we did on Thursday night. And I'm going to do that for two reasons. One, I'm going to show you that we called these trades ahead of time. This was no after the fact, oh, look how it played out. You know, oh, we, you know, we totally would have caught that. No, we caught these trades. All of my students, they caught these trades. We also took a couple of these trades on my live trade copier, which if you're interested in that, that's still free to join. Um, we currently in uh, New Zealand dollar yen, uh, we're up about 55, 60 pips on that. That's currently running. So we're going to take a look at the trades. Then I'm going to link in or I'm going to add in the actual live trade room. And so for two reasons. So you can see that we, uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we called out these trades that they're very easy to spot, very easy to take. Um, you know, just show you how easy it is to add Renko's into your trading and also give you idea of what our live trade rooms look like. We try and just get in, get out very concise to the point. Uh, you know, you won't see me rambling on for like an hour and a half as some people like to do when they hold live trade rooms. We don't do that. I just show you what trades you need to be looking for and then you put those on your watch list. We set our alerts. When our alerts go off, we enter the trade. Very, very simple keeps you from having to be glued to the screen all the time. So let's first start with Australian dollar yen. Now, most of the trades that I'm going to show you are what is called our RTM strategy or return to median. And so for those of you that are new, this pink middle line here, that's the middle of our channel, that is our median. And we're just looking for divergent retracement trades to go back to that median. And depending on the brick frame that we use, brick frame being the size of these Renko bricks, you can see it down here. Uh, 60 is a very short term scalping brick frame. 120 is more of an intraday swing trading brick frame. And so it, a lot of these are just short, quick in and out scalps. And then we have a couple of them that are a little bit longer intraday, like our uh, a couple of our yen trades. So here we have Australian dollar, um, uh, Japanese yen and this was a classic divergent setup where we had price coming outside of this blue band and then we had divergence setting up on this MACD now of course a couple of people will be like okay well why didn't we enter on in on these first two peaks now that's why I want you to stay tuned until the live trade room at the end of this 
I go over all of that. I tell you exactly why we would or would not have gotten into those first two trades and then why this final peak down here was where we would have ultimately pulled the trigger. And on this trade, we go from our initial reversal brick on up, we would have caught an easy 35 pips off of that. Now just think about that. One trade caught 35 pips, easy, almost zero drawdown on that, right into profit. And if you added just one of those trades to your current trading, uh, just a week, just one a week, added 35 pips to your current pip count, uh, imagine what you could do with that, especially when these either they go or they don't, and you rarely take any type of drawdown on these. If you do, it's usually because that trade didn't work out, uh, and the win-loss percentage on these is close to about 70 to 80% uh, if you follow the rules exactly. I get a lot of questions about that all the time too. I'm not going to I'm not going to spout out win-loss percentages because I try and tell everybody it's going to depend on you as the trader if you follow the rules exactly, if you deviate, if you actually pull the trigger at the right time, but if you follow these the way that I take these trades, you will get results uh, similar to that. Now, if we look at CAD yen, again, another very classic divergent where we look for these double bottom, double top, or what we would call here a better than double bottom formation where we have price, that second peak going a little bit lower, giving us what we refer to in the course as a falling W formation. And then on this one, it came right up and then finally tapped that median. At the end of the day, we had our uh, take profit level at 25 pips. And we got that, you know, we got that. And again, just basic divergence off of this MACD. Now we have, um, we have Swiss franc yen. This one, we're still holding on this one because we haven't had this hit the median yet. Uh, but again, another better than W formation, divergent on the MACD. We're entering right there after the very first reversal brick. And then we're looking to take it up here to the median. Again, another 25 pip trade. And this one we may or may not scratch out of with just a small amount of profit um, when markets open because uh, I want to see where they're going to open up at. And we try not to hold these types of trades over the weekend. Now, here we have Euro Canadian dollar. This one was a beautiful because it was a twofer. We got two trades out of this where we had this initial divergence here. We had to wait for it to get outside of this band. Then here we had the divergence. We took that first one up for 25 pips. It just hit that take profit level. And then it came back down and gave us another divergent double bottom. Again, a falling W formation. And we took this up twice. Two times for 25 pips each. That's 50 pips in a single day. Again, imagine just adding one of these trades a week to your current trading routine. I'm telling you, Renko's are the truth. They are so much easier to trade than Japanese candlesticks if you have a specific strategy in place. They make the price action look so much cleaner and they take so much of the noise out of the market. You just have to know how to trade them. You can't trade them the same way that you trade Japanese candlesticks, but that's good because it takes uh, a lot of that confusion away from how you traditionally trade Japanese candlestick formations. Then we have Euro JPY. This one we're waiting. This one we have our first peak setting up and we're waiting for this to come down and give us a, a double bottom. So this one is a setup in the making. Uh, haven't had that one play out yet. And then this was our winner, winner, chicken dinner, our uh, New Zealand dollar yen. Now we are holding this over the weekend, but you'll hear me in the in the live room talk about how I know that this one will go all the way to the other side of the channel. We usually just take it to the median, but I was like, you look, hold this one to the other side of the channel at a minimum. I think this is going to be a strong reversal and we should see this actually go for a while. And that is exactly what is happening. Well, again, we've got this one open on our copier, uh, waiting to see how it's going to open at market today. We might just close this one with a nice 65 pips or we might hold this one for a little bit longer, but that's exactly what happened. We entered here on that nice divergent setup all the way up for 65 pips to the other side of the band. And then I had some students close out with, you know, that really nice chunk of profit. And then I had others that are holding with me over the weekend. And either way, we have our stop loss at break even. We're about 20 pips in positive profit. So no matter what, we're taking some profit out of this trade. Beautiful. And again, almost zero drawdown on this one. 
And then last but not least, we had USDJPY. And this one kind of head faked a lot of people because we were looking to enter in here. And then we had that big market maker push that came up and stopped a lot of people out with that very strong, uh, it was almost a 55 pip push um, in a single hour on Friday. It was either Thursday or Friday. And it took a lot of people out. This is on the 120 brick frame. And we were waiting for this as a swing trade. So we did get stopped on this, but as it came back down, we were able to catch that second chance entry. And I talk about that a lot in our rooms where when we get a second chance entry on these divergent setups, as long as the divergence is still there, very high probability setup. Those are almost one of our, uh, those are like our, you know, our Fort Knox trades because they happen almost every single time to where you get, you get back what you lost and then some because then it really goes all the way into your favor. And, you know, entering on this again, about another 60 pip trade. We did hit that take profit here. And again, some of uh, some of my students exited at that point. Others are going to hold this one because long term projection for USD JPY is bearish. So we're looking to see if this is a, a major reversal point. Either way, the trades are um, risk free at this at this uh, state at this point in time and then uh, we'll see what happens at market open either way as you can see here are the totals for all of those trades 285 pips if you add all those trades up and that was just from Thursday that was Thursday Friday plus this UJ trade that we had been watching for a while so that is an incredible amount of pips for just a couple days now we did have to wait for uh, you know a good three or four days for these setups to happen they don't some of them happen every day in a very volatile market like last week we didn't have a lot of setups and that's gonna happen I mean there weren't a lot of price action setups either last week it was a very very slow uh, consolidating sideways market for a, most of the pairs but as you can see with Renko, this it just makes it so much more clearer, so much more easier to add these types of uh, scalping and intraday setups uh, to your current trading. And then you can take this and add in whatever else you want. I've got students that use this with harmonics. I've got students that use this with Elia waves. I've got students that just have their own secret sauce that they like to use this with. And it's just an addition. It's added confluence. And it, like I said, it takes a lot of the noise out of the market so that's it didn't want to make this one too long I'll go ahead and add in the live room uh, right now after uh, this so if you're interested in any of this I've got all the links in the description of this video again this one was just going out to all the haters who were telling me you know oh this doesn't work in a live market and, and you know if you back test and yada 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 well it does work in a live market and it works week in and week out for myself and all of my students in the student group and we send these signals out all the time in our private student telegram so if you want to be part of that like I said just message me directly v go visit the website www.zenfxtrading.com click on Renko course it'll give you uh, the full details and the breakdown on that. So that's it for me today. I was glad I could make this video for you guys and look for my price action weekly analysis of all, all of the major pairs that I do every Sunday. That should be out in a couple hours as well. Just another free service that we give to you guys here at ZenFX. So let's have a great trading week. I'll see all of you guys in the charts. And as always, let's get those pips. Take care, guys. So let's take a look at our setups tonight. Now the markets finally started to move. We've got some really good volatility. As I had mentioned, it just takes some patience when we have slow markets. You guys just need to be patient. Um, if you're on the copier service, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, we crushed already a couple really good trades. I closed a trade today uh, for Audi NZD for about 80 plus pips. Uh, we've got two other trades right now that are both running at about 50 or 60 pips in profit. Uh, I mean, we just we f when we finally get that momentum and that volatility coming back in, we just have to be ready to take advantage of it. And so uh, let's take a look at what we've got to take advantage of tonight. Let's start with our RTM trades. 
Um, I'm only going to go over the 60 brick frame setups because we got a ton of them. I don't want to make the video too long. You are at your leisure to, to, to look at the 120 brick frames if you want to look for some more swing trade opportunities. Um, that The UJ trade that we had been looking at on uh, the 120, it took one more uh, push up. Okay, it did what we refer to as that second chance entry, and now it's finally starting to drop. Well, let's actually take a look at that in just a sec. But um, first one we want to take a look at is AJ. Now, this is a little bit of a unique one because this it does not happen very often, but we get a very shallow zigzag pattern coming in. And when we get something like that, you know, so we have just these two brick uh, retracements and very shallow retracements here on the MBFX, and this is why it's very important that you keep that in mind. This first retracement, far too shallow to take an entry on. Then the second retracement would have been a decent entry, and now we're here at what we would refer to as our second chance entry, meaning that we got stopped out on that first one, which would have been this entry here, and then this is our second chance, and usually those have a very high probability of playing out. So I uh, I would um, I would say that AJ would be a pretty good one for entering in long. Um, there's still time; it's still divergent, and uh, this reversal brick has already printed, but it's pulling back. So you could actually get a very good risk to reward ratio right now. Um, small, very small stop loss. And uh, almost, you, know, you could be shooting for about 45 pips to take profit. So uh, good possibility there. CAD JPY, we had a very deep W form and this uh, two very distinct peaks. And we do have that double bubble forming now. Uh, again, this was one where uh, if you didn't enter in earlier, now you're getting a second chance entry here. We do have some good divergence on the MACD. This is just looking very textbook right now. And uh, so if you're catching this video anytime, uh, you know, within the next, within this, uh, you know, within a very, you know, up to, I don't know why I can't talk. If you're catching this video soon after I post it to the uh, channel, then you should be able to jump in this and take advantage of this trade. If we measure this out, um, it's not a lot. As far as risk to reward, about 30 pips, but you'll be able to take a very tight stop loss of about 25, still a good one-to-one -one risk to reward. We know that um, usually the, these CAD pairs don't move very big unless they're paired with other volatile pairs. So we have uh, Swiss franc, yen. This one's also a nice divergent pair. Uh, we've just got that double bubble forming now, and we might possibly have this reversal brick here. Um, or it may push further down. Come on, man. MT4 is just not working for me there. So good divergence on the MACD. Keep an eye on that one. Um, set your alerts high and low um, because we've got good confirmation here as well on the um, with our reversal sun indicator. Um, so we could be at a nice level of exhaustion looking for that to start pulling back and this would be a great place to to pull back from um, Let's take a look the the risk reward is going to be minimal. So don't go in heavy on this one um, Probably going to be about one to one. I would say probably about 25 pip stop loss 25 pip take profit So definitely keep an eye on that one next. We're going to look at is Euro CAD And on this one we've got uh, we almost had a setup that failed, uh, but now we finally got that push outside of the channel and it's forming a little bit of a, of a unique setup. We get kind of like a, a triple W here where, uh, the, the, you know, the second leg of that W did not form outside of the blue channel. This peak now is forming outside the blue channel and they are still divergent. So, uh, good setup on that. So definitely keep an eye on EC. This one would be another one where you'd want to set both of your uh, limits high and low, your alert limits, and wait to see how this next brick starts to play out. Uh, could possibly push down one more blue, and that would be just fine because then that's going to give us an even better risk to reward. If it reversed now, we'd be looking at about maybe 30 pips. If it pushes down one more blue brick, then we could definitely get at least 35 out of um, a... Uh, 
uh, an RTM setup at that point in time. Euro JPY, um, we've got a big push outside of the lane right now. Um, what we want to keep an eye out for is for this to possibly start forming a W here uh, because it is very far down. And when we look at the other side of this, when we look at the one, two, three setup that this is also forming, you're going to see that it should start forming either a W or a lightning bolt pattern here eventually. Um, you know, and what we want is just for it to do something like this, form that first leg, form that second leg, and then we can look for this RTM trade. But in the meantime, we also want to look for this one, two, three trade. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, and then on Euro NZD, uh, this one we need to see, th this one I want to talk about because it's not a good setup and I want to make sure that you guys are understanding why these aren't. So we have what might look like a W here that's divergent, but again, we don't take it unless there's a W here on the MBFX. And you see how this just shows a single peak of blue turning pink and then turning white. Okay, that's just one single peak. We don't have that W formation where we go blue, white, then blue, white. Okay, so just how, just as how on the bricks here, it would be blue to white, blue to white. We need to see that W on the MBFX. That's why if you're looking at EN, I would not consider it a good reversal setup or at least not a good RTM trade, even though we've got everything else kind of um, there. So it's always very important to know what not to look for as much as uh, what to look for. And then on NZDJPY, this one um, already kind of took off, unfortunately, but it is uh, it was a nice setup. Um, we took this one. Um, we're already in this trade on the copier and I wanted to show you guys why we took that trade. This was an earlier RTM setup. I'm sorry I didn't have time to send it out in the group. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing my own personal trading, I just don't have time to send out every single trade that I see, every single setup. Uh, I try to send out as much as I can. There's another reason why I've been telling everybody that you know I'm not focusing a lot on the, the signals this past couple months. I'm just more focused on getting pips on the copier, which is what most people have requested anyways. Um, so I wasn't able to send this trade out, but this was a nice trade. You know, we got a good entry here and currently, you know, we're up about 15 uh, pips on this. And this is actually one where I'm going to hold this for a longer term. Uh, I think this is going to push up a little bit farther. I'm, I want more than 15 pips out of this. I'd like to see it go to at least the other side of the channel here and maybe get about 50 pips out of this. Um, but we'll see how that plays out because that's, that's another we reason why I didn't send that out as a signal because I want to try and swing this particular trade. Um, I think this is going to be a strong reversal point, and that's what I want to see happen. Now, on UJ, that's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Let's just take a look at this as a case study. Um, so if we open this up and take a look at the, the, uh, the 120, we'll see that this is a classic example of... Um, uh, second chance entry and it you know I we, we were completely right about this analysis it's just that we got basically stop hunted out of this trade now if you look at the candlesticks yeah I mean look at that um, we had great entry around here and then just that huge spike and this is on the hourly chart. We just had a massive spike. This happened in less than 15 minutes. I mean, that's a classic market maker stop hunt, which is usually 35 to 40 pips. Just came up, tagged everybody's stop loss, including ours, which was very, um, we, it was about 50 pips. It was very, very large for a stop hunt, uh, for a stop loss level. I thought we were well outside of our, the their range. Uh, apparently not. Came up, tagged us, and then dropped exactly like we were looking for it to do. So back on the 120, this was where we had uh, been looking at. We had here, and then we also had the divergence down here. And we'd been watching this for quite some time. Um, we had, this is a very strong level of support, and we had price get, uh, bouncing off of that. Came down a little bit. And then here was the stop hunt, boom, 
took us out and then has been dropping since. Okay, and it's uh, dropped a good 55, 60 pips since then and should probably drop for a little bit uh, while longer. And we knew it was going to drop. And I, I have people ask me a lot of the times why I take larger stop losses. Um, because as you become more experienced of a trader, you're not looking for that perfect entry. You you know that the market will do crazy things every once in a while, and it doesn't matter how well you trust your own analysis. You just want to make sure that you don't get tagged out of a trade by crazy stuff like that, because it's a it's like twice as painful to see a trade get stopped out by a spike and then also go in the direction that you knew it was going to go into, and then you watch all of that profit slip away. Uh, plus, you took the loss. So. That, that is one of the worst things that can happen to you as a trader, um, and it will happen to everyone many times in your career. Um, that's why a lot of traders take much larger stop losses. I know some people that trade with you know massive, like 100, 150 pip stop losses just to try and avoid getting spiked out, and then they actively monitor their trades. Um, so that's just something that you guys will, uh, if you're not already doing, you'll probably end up adopting later on as you tend to trade more and you get more years under your belt. Um, now let's all uh, take a look at our one, two, three setups and then we'll call it a night. One thing I wanted to take a look at was Euro JPY. And now I talked about this on Sunday. If you guys had watched the recording, we were here and I talked about this tap off of the 200, very strong reversal level, um, especially here at the 50. When we get that confluence of the Fibonacci along with the 200 uh, exponential, it's uh, it's one of my favorite, it, especially if we can get it with the 36. But if we get just a Fib level with the 200, that's very strong too. The entry would have been here, and now we had it give a second bounce off the 200, but it dropped very, very well. Okay, it gave out a good 60 pips before then giving us our second reversal. And here was our second one, two, three entry again, right there at the 50. It almost tapped that 61.8 off of the 24 EMA. And then that would have been a nice second entry dropping down for another 80 pips. So you would have gotten a good 80 pips off your initial position plus this, uh, or um, well, 80 plus 60, you would have got about 140 pips off of this initial position so far. Sorry, I guess my math is off. Um, Oh, right, because of the retracement. So you get about 115 off of that initial and then another 80 off of the second scaled in position off of the 60. That would have been a great trade. And that's just using simple levels, waiting for it to cross through the 200 and waiting for that uh, that one, two, three setup. OK, so EJ is just a great example. Uh, now let's take a look at some things that are forming up uh, as we speak. CAD JPY, this one. Uh, we had talked about this is one of the RTM setups that we're looking at. Okay, so this is a, a double bottom that we're looking at now, or it's a better than double bottom. Now, this is where I talk about we got to be able to think about catching these trades going in both directions. Now, if you remember, this is a very this was the very deep retracement here. Uh, if we measure this out, this was let's take a look. Uh, Again, a very nice, this is one that was perfect. 36, 200, and the 50 uh, FIB level. That's a beautiful entry right there. Here, down, um, was about 50 pips, and now it's starting to pull back a little bit. Now we want to take a look at that pullback. So this is our RTM setup. We want to catch that for the buy and then see where it comes back to. And if we get it to here, the 61.8, the 36 EMA, and this 50 uh, should all be in line. So it's going to come up possibly into this area. This is right about where we talked about. It was going to get to about 25 to 30 pips. So if we get price to come up into this area and wick and get rejected at the 61.8, then we turn right back around, close that buy, and open a sell, and look to take that continuation on down. So that's how we have our RTM setups rolling right into our one, two, three setups, and that's why we always want to look at it from both sides. Now, Chief JPY, the Chief, you know, the Frank Yen, same thing. 
Okay, we've got price pushing down. This is also one of our RTM setups. If we get that RTM to play out and start pushing up, we want to start taking a look at what level it starts to reverse at and continue back on down. So you see here um, we have the 61.8 and the 50 right in this area. Right here. Okay, and like I said, if it pushes down uh, one more and starts pushing up from here, there's your 30 to 35 pips. Reversal here, close that buy order, and then look to open your sell. Okay, so always keep those two sides of the coin in mind. Now, GBP CAD, this is a good one. We've got a nice breakthrough of the 200 right now. Um, keep an eye on this for a further push down and then a pullback to the close to the 200. Let's uh, if we get something of that nature, then look for that sell opportunity. That's a good one, two, three setup possibly. Uh, it's forming this nice little. It's got kind of a little bit of a double bottom forming now, but we'll see where it goes from here. So keep an eye on GPP CAD. Now these next two very very good setups. If you're not in these ones yet. Um, you could possibly either enter a, a limit order or wait for the cross. So here's what we're talking about. Now on USD CAD and on USD Swiss franc, I'm going to mark these both up pretty much exactly the same. We've got an overall bearish bias on these. We've got a nice double top formation on both. And we've already entered into a cell on USD CAD on the copier because we're, we're looking for this to um, to drop we entered in here at that first reversal brick and we're looking to take an early entry with a very tight stop so if you're not in this one already you can set a buy limit order here and um, if price comes back up and tags that order then you could get in and kind of a, a, a late entry if not, what we want to look for is for price to push down, get the cross of the 12 and the 36, and then wait to see if we can get that first pullback off of this initial move. And then we'll be looking to take it down towards this 200 EMA. That's going to be uh, take profit level number one. So a lot's going to have to happen. We, we, you know, we need to get a good... Uh, lightning bolt pattern to start to form a good you know one two three setup but if you're not already in this those are your two options to set either um, a pending order which would be a sell limit in case it pushes back up one more time maybe just a little stop hunt you can activate your order before the drop um, or wait for the uh, one two three setup to happen after the initial drop and same here with USD Swiss franc so we've got that We've got that uh, drop um, is coming. We've got a very, you know, we've got a good, strong overall um, bias bearish on this. Um, we're not in on this one uh, on the copier because I, I had to make a choice between CAD and uh, Swiss franc, and we don't want to have too many trades open at any one given time. I don't want anybody to be completely over leveraged on their account. So I try and keep it, you know, between six or seven trades. So I just took one, but these are both pretty much identical setups. You can either, um, now this one would be a little bit easier to catch a sell limit because look how, very close to that entry as it is right now. It's only maybe five pips away. So you could enter now, you could put a sell limit on to try and catch that extra five pips, or you can wait for the first push get the EMAs to cross and then get that initial pullback and see if it gives us a lightning bolt pattern. Look for the 200 EMA to be your take profit target. Okay, guys. So uh, that was it. Um, you know, a little bit longer of a video tonight, but we had a ton of stuff that I wanted to go over and tried to go over it as quickly as possible. So keep an eye out for all those trades. Um, uh, I'll let you guys watch the video uh, and, you know, uh, I won't post any of the actual screenshots because uh, I already went over it in detail here tonight. Um, so set those alerts on your side. Look for those trade entries. Hopefully you can get into them uh, in time, the ones that I just uh, went over in the very beginning. And uh, and then, yeah, and then we'll go from there. 
uh, that's it for this week. Uh, let's uh, finish up the week strong. We've got a bunch of great trade possibilities, and then we'll have our next, uh, uh, our next, uh, yeah, our next room recording on Sunday night. All right, guys. Let's finish up the, have a great rest of the week, then enjoy our weekend. And if you guys have any questions or need anything, just give me a holler. All right, guys, take care.